Right. So pick him back up. I say all right a lot. I'm chastising myself silently for that. Okay. So instead of saying, all right, I'm going to say, okay. So we talked about memory allocation. What is alloc doing? It's allocating space for us to put our code, our labels, our variables, our functions, whatever the hell we want to create in this assembly script. Alloc is making space for us somewhere in memory for us to do that because we can't just say, give me memory and it happens. But I mean, to be more specific, we can, because that's exactly what we're doing with alloc. We're just telling the operating system, give me memory, but you can't just code inject on some random address and start overwriting all kinds of things with all kinds of instructions and expect stuff to work because it won't for reasons that we talked about. So labels. What are labels? Labels are essentially names for things. So what do we like, Can we be any more specific than that? Not really. Labels are names for variables, they're names for chunks of code, they're names for returns, they're names for injection points, they're names for AOB scans. Labels are just names associated with something. It's purposefully generic and abstract because, because it just is. So instead of having one big section where... All right, so I want to stop here for a second. The way that I'm going to structure these scripts, or the, um, the script that we're writing here and the scripts in the series, is a preferential to my own stylistic tendencies. This is not my, the way that I'm going to structure these scripts um, is not hard and fast. There are other ways to do it. If you download sheet tables and look at other scripts, people do it uh, in wildly different ways. So I'm not promoting that my way is the best or anything like that. And, you know, people are, oh, well, you know, why are you even talking about it? Because when it comes to programming and writing code, stylistic preferences is something that most, almost no two people will ever agree on. They may agree on 90% of it, but there will always be that 10% where people are like, you're totally out of your mind. Why would you ever put a space between an open parenthesis and a closed parenthesis or whatever the case may be? So... I just, you know, want to throw up a quick disclaimer here that the way that I'm doing the scripts is the way that I feel comfortable, and it's kind of a compromise between readability and uh, conciseness. So with that said, labels. Labels are names for things. You can refer to almost anything by a label. So are we just going to have one sort of like comment section here with labels? That's not how I like to do it. The way that I like to do it is I kind of break it up a little bit. So I like to have sort of an entry function. So what do I mean by entry? What I mean is that we're going to inject on son of a bitch, was it, uh, three nine. All right. So we are going to inject at uh, one nine three two EC three nine. We're going to overwrite this instruction. And so I will have an entry label, or it's essentially it's a function, but you, there's assembly doesn't really make that uh, distinction per se, or at least we're not going to make that distinction. So we're going to have a label so that when we enter, when we inject our script into this location and we overwrite this instruction, we'll have some sort of entry function that will be called as soon as control is transferred to our script, and it'll have some logic in it that says, all right, you know, is it for the player? Is it for the enemy? We won't have to deal with any of the is it for player or enemy stuff um, because we're just at a karma screen. But it, nevertheless, I like to follow this style because it structures the script in a way where it's just sort of easily... It's logical. So we're going to make a label and we, we're using camel case. And if you're not familiar with camel case, you can go to uh, Wikipedia, type in camel case. It'll basically tell you what camel case is. You can see right here, the name of the article is camel case. It's where a compound word or abbreviation begins each element with a capital letter. You can kind of see how it's related to the camel with humps and all that. So entry. Uh, and with my preference with the uh, camel case, the first word is always um, lowercase, all of it. I never capitalize the first one. So label is uh, entry. 
and then I name my labels or again, I'm going to call them functions because essentially we're creating functions as far as the entry, the entry function goes. It is a function because we're going to encode logic in it. So what do I, what, I'm, what are we going to call it? What value first I'm going to name it, you know, the first word is entry. Then I like to sort of apply some verb. What do we change or like some adjective? What are we changing? We are in, we are changing available karma, but we have to break it down even further, further than that and say, we are going to deal with increased karma. So let's, let's do that. So we will name it entry increase karma. That's it. And then we'll sort of, you know, well, what about decreasing karma? Well, that's a good question. We will make something for that as well. Decrease karma. So what next? We're basically what we're doing at this point is we are rewriting all the stuff down here in a way that we are rewriting all the stuff down here in a more structured way so that it's easier to read. It makes sense logically. We've divided it up into logical units of execution. Um, and I just find it easier. And this is how I do it. Again, you can download any table in existence and see that everybody does it some other way. So, I, I mean, I'm, there's no other way for me to say it than that. And there's actually a typo right here. You have to be very careful about typos when you're doing this assembly stuff. So, what's next? I like to have a process section. So, what do I mean by that? Well, we're going to have an entry function so that whenever we click increase or decrease karma, there will be some logic in these two functions right here. That says, you know, how do we want to handle this sort of event? Do we, you know, we could dispatch it in sort of a technical way, but, you know, we could break the control flow down or the logic down here to where um, when if we, you know, entry increase karma, well, you know, maybe, you know, available karma, maybe we want to do something different if available karma is above 50 or below 50. The way that you would do that is you would put that logic into increase karma or entry increase karma, entry decrease karma and then you what I do is I have processing functions so to use the example that we were just using I would say something like um, process um, increase karma again typo above 50 I like to spell it out and be pedantic so you could do that and then say you know process uh, increase karma below 50 then you'd have to sort of, um, not sort of, but you would have to apply that same sort of logic to the decrease karma entry function. Um, decrease karma above 50. We're not going to do this, but I'm just typing it out um, to, to be pedantically clear about it. Uh, below 50. So, again, why do we have entry functions? We or Why do I have entry functions? I have entry functions so that I can apply some logic to the initial value or to the initial values or whatever I'm dealing with as soon as control is transferred over to the script. My entry functions are essentially just the brain that says, well, a value is this, so I want to do that. A value is that, so I want to do this, so on and so forth. Um, you could, you know, replace entry with logic or whatever, but the reason why do I call them entry functions? Because it's sort of a throwback to when I wrote C code and, uh, and basically C sort of calls them entry functions. Let's see, uh, entry uh, function. Is that something? No, I didn't think so. Let's, go, let's just type entry, hit enter, see what Wikipedia says. Really, you don't have any sort of computer science thing? Go to entrance, display manager. No, I don't want to deal with the X window system. At least not yet. A gate or a door, and I'm sure there's there's some word, some I'm recording this on the fly, and I'm talking off the top of my head, so I'm sure there, there's some other word that I'm just not thinking of because I'm on the spot. But basically, entry functions are the gatekeepers. They apply logic to the con to the registers and the state, if you will. That's what I'm going to say. Entry functions apply logic to the state of the application. As soon as control is transferred to the script and they decide how they want to proceed from there.
So we're going to get rid of all this stuff because we're not going to make the distinction. There'll be no logic in these two functions that, you know, differentiate between above 50, below 50 and stuff like that. And if you're coming at this from, um, you know, if you're a programmer in another language, you're, you know, you're asking yourself, well, you know, why the hell do I have to, you know, above 50, below, you know, increase karma above 50, increase karma below 50, you know, and you have to be so pedantic about it. You have to be so pedantic about it because it's just the way that assembly is. There's no, it's very hard to do branching in assembly. Is it possible? Yes. But for our purposes of illustrating, you know, we're going to build from the ground up when it comes to doing this stuff. So for our purposes, we are simply just going to say there's no way for us to differentiate or do um, that sort of uh, dynamic logic is what I would say. If, if that made no sense to you, then don't worry about it. So let's get back on, let's get back on track here. So now we have our entry functions. So now we're going to have our process functions. So the first thing, they're, the next function that we're going to make, and again, they're labels, but you'll see that once we get into it, they're actually functions because... What we're going to do is we're going to associate assembly instructions with these labels so that we can basically just sort of call them and execute logic. So if entry increase karma exists, then by definition, we need some way to process or some function to jump to to execute the actual instructions of that increase karma has determined need to be executed so we're there's going to be no actual movement or um changing of data values in the entry functions they're just again they're just the brain that contain logic so where is the actual um instructions going to exist they're going to exist in the process functions and these are the functions that will actually change values so there you go we're creating a label for increase karma and decrease karma so that when the entry increase karma function is, is sort of called or jumped to as is, is essentially how it's really going to work we're going to jump to that and we'll talk about jumps in a little bit but essentially when this function entry increase karma is called it will do some logical examination of the state of the application and then based on whatever the results of its examination is it will jump to this process function. So you may be asking yourself, there's only one entry function and there's only one process function. So what the hell does it matter? Why do you even have that? Because as you create your scripts and sort of build them out and they get more advanced and there's more logic, you may want to do exactly what we were talking about before, where, you know, I want to increase karma above fit or I'm sorry, below 50 or above 50. So now, I mean, at, by, by breaking up your script, your functions, your labels, whatever you want to say, by breaking it up in this way, you have just a basic structure built where you can just add on to it whatever functionality you want in a very logical way. You have an entry function which says, here's the state, examine the state, decide what the hell we're going to do. You have your process function, which does whatever the hell you're going to do. And then down here, you're going to have your return functions. We're going to get rid of that. You're going to have your return, uh, we're going to, they're functions, or they're not functions per se, is what I kind of meant to say there. They're mostly, ac they're actual labels in, how are we going to say this? You will never actually write any code for the returns. They, what the returns do is they basically jump to the instruct, the subsequent instruction from where you code injected. So we are injecting at this address. We are transferring control to the entry, increase karma. We'll just use that as an example. We decide some logic. We want to process increase karma. We do that. Then we want to return to increase karma. What is return increase karma? It's essentially just sort of a alias for the next instruction. It just tells the assembler script, hand control back to the application, and do whatever comes after the instruction where we were injected at. And that's sort of the layout of um of how you don't crash your application if you screw up the returns your application is out to lunch and it will crash and we'll pick this up in the next video